do, it just happens to be. So if there's such a thing as a co cosmic justice, he was not handed any of it. I would question that if God were appeared today, here I am, worshiping, I'm going to just, hold on one second, sit yourself down, I have a few questions, starting with a guy named Eric Carr. What did he ever do to deserve this? Nothing. He was always a good guy, gave to charity, helped other people, always a kind word. Rumors got started around the time Eric woke up one day and called me and said, I, we got off tour, can you recommend a good doctor? I'm spitting up blood. This happened overnight. He was having appetite problems, wasn't eating right, couldn't sleep right, and when he got home, he threw, he threw up blood. So I sent him to the New York Mount Sinai Hospital, and doctors looked at him, and they immediately diagnosed a possible cancer. Within six months of that, Eric was dead, he passed away. During that time, Paul and I flew to New York City, visited him in the hospital, made sure the doctors and we spoke, make sure his things were in order, that his will was taken care of, his loved ones were taken care of, bills were paid off, all that stuff. I will tell you, uh, in God's honest truth, when we were in the hospital with Eric, he was saying, okay, come on, let's get out of here. I, you know, I want to go get... His favorite thing was a McDonald's, not the Whopper, the Quarter Pounder, was it? The bit, no, even bigger. I think the Quarter Pounder. His favorite thing were McDonald's fries shake. That's what he lived on on the road, not the best food. And the doctors are shaking their hands on me. So we snuck out and brought in what he loved to the hospital, and we all shared, you know, when they were gone, stories and kidded around, and Paul and I knew that it was terminal, that he was gonna pass away. And during that time, we were offered to do a song called God Gave Rock and Roll to You for a movie called Bill and Ted. And we decided to move ahead. This is when we were not wearing makeup. We decided to do it, recorded it with Bob Ezrin, and Eric kept pleading to come in and record, and his doctor said, absolutely not, I don't care what you do, he has to stay in the hospital. Whether he's got a chance to live or not, he must stay here, observation. The cancer could, could come back fast, and it could ruin it or not. So he's getting chemo, staying in the hospital. We finished the song, and Interscope, which was putting out the single, Eric Singer played on the single. Eric called us and pleaded, as we were about to do the video, please let me do the video, let me appear. We talked with his doctors and they said, he has two or three months left, there's nothing we can do. He may as well do what he wants to do and make himself happy. So, we made special arrangements for Eric to fly out to Los Angeles with special makeup people and stuff. And the way it was edited and lit, if you watch God Gave Rock and Roll to You, the video of us, that's Eric's last performance, about two to three months after that, he passed away. While he was doing that, he was in enormous pain, he was medicated, and was doing what he loved to do. Along the, after he passed away, there's always somebody who's gonna you know, point to something, like the cancer is somebody's fault, and why didn't you do something about it? There's nothing you can do. You can do the best you can, and that's the God's, God's honest truth of what happened. What we can do for Eric is celebrate his life and not necessarily mourn his death. There's nothing you can do about his death, but we can sure celebrate his life. I should get out of here before I start crying in front of you, so that's not fair. I would love one. What's your name? Uh, Bryce. Nice to see you, Bryce. Uh, domo arigato gozaimasu. Toi itashimashite, anata otsukoshi. Anata saiko desu. How can you say that? Um, <laughs> so desu ne. Hai, so desu ne. Anata nihongo ga hetta desu. Pura pura janai. Wow. Very impressive.
What I said kiddingly was, you're beautiful. Then I said, no, 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 you're excellent. Psycho, like Psycho Circus, no. Psycho in Japanese means the best. So you go, Psycho desu, and you lower your head a little bit. You know where this came from, where Japanese always do that? In the days of the shoguns, if you ever looked up and looked at the shoguns and the lords when they came by, they'd chop your head off. So you must offer your neck and never look up so that they know that you're giving, honoring them, that my neck is yours to cut off. In fact, when you see two Japanese businessmen, they will always bow lower. Watch. They shake their hand, you bow. If I see you bow, bow a little bit, I'll bow lower. <laughs> Which reminds me of a funny story. We had Mr. Udo, who was Japanese, but also spoke English, and he met us at Tokyo Airport when we came to do one of the tours. And he spoke, spoke broken English. And I know a little Japanese and stuff. So he knew that we were American and didn't understand Japanese culture, so he put his hand out to shake my hand. Shake, put your hand right. I, so, be, so when I go, go, then you should put your hand out, right? So he knew that I didn't speak Japanese, and I knew that he may not speak English so well, so I was trying to honor him by being Japanese. He was trying to honor me by being American. So now put your hand out, and here's what we did. <laughs> and, then, and then we saw that, and now you bend forward. You bow forward. You bow. <laughs> you ever see those things that get the, the water and stuff? So we did that for a while. That's the end of my story. Don't mind that.